thermal exhaust port that the Rebels used to blow up the Death Star, did it, did it keep the reactors cool, and like, was it, or was it just a complete design flaw by the Empire? The technical term for the exhaust port on the Death Star is MacGuffin. Uh, that is a plot monster that was there to be shot at to make the last scene awesome. The gotcha that I saw with that is they're using an exhaust port instead of uh, fins to radiate off into space. Mm -hmm. So if you're using an yep. exhaust port, that means you're venting gas out that port. I mean, so you'd have to have a, another exhaust port for equal and opposite reaction. You'd have to have another exhaust port exactly opposite it on the other side. And there's also, the, the Death Star itself right. has propulsion mechanism such that it could counteract its um, the, the, the offset of that thermal exhaust port. Is it coming? There we go. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice death star. Yeah, it was great. It was great. <laughs> uh, does a technology exist to create a real life reflector? Like one you may see on that Death Star over there. I really like the, the, the laser shock wave idea where essentially if something's coming in, you can sense it's coming in and cause some sort of shock wave to deflect it using that physical media. Similar maybe to reactive armor that's used on some tanks now, where a projectile hits the armor and you uh, it blows up and basically cancels the uh, force, the opposing force. At least in the, the first three, the canonical real movies, I'm totally going to get flamed for that. But in the real movies, <laughs> all of the weapons seem to be based on charged particles. So if the Death Star's laser is actually, say, an electron beam, which would look different, but... If that was the case, and if the Rebels are always fighting back with charged proton torpedoes, then maybe a magnetic field is the right answer. Maybe that magnetic braking is what you need. Is the Death Star energy efficient? My guess is no. When they power up to destroy Alderaan, uh, right. that's a lot of energy, and you see things sort of, you know, powering down, the lights are dimming. People are a little stressed out there, even, but um, if you actually look at the amount of power that takes to destroy a planet, there are very specific technical definitions of what it means to disrupt a planet like that in planetary evolution and planetary science, and it's a whole lot of energy. I have done that calculation. Oh, so great. I can tell you how much power is going into that burst. Yeah, I've done it too. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's compare numbers. Yeah, okay, great. So, uh, to disrupt a planet, you have to fragment it such that the largest piece left is half of its original uh, mass. Ah, yeah, That's that E star D. <laughs> so if you're blowing away half of an Earth mass, that's going to be 3 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, right? And so you're shooting that off to infinity. We're then talking about energy in joules, so one joule is the amount of energy it takes to lift something about the size of a big apple about a meter or three feet off the ground, and so one times ten to the twenty-four, that's the one with twenty-four zeros after it, joules, is one, and I couldn't have made this up, Yoda joule. <laughs> that's Y-O-T-T-A, not Y-O-D-A, but that is a Yoda joule. <laughs> So what, what are your numbers looking like, Michelle? <laughs> I'm uh, like six or so orders of magnitude higher than you. Very impressive, um, very, a very efficient technology, because if they had even 1% waste heat, uh, the Death Star itself would melt. And yeah, that, you don't really have to blow the whole planet apart. All you have to do is unload the crust. If you can oh. peel the crust off using this binding energy voodoo, then the mantle is under such high pressure from having had that heavy crust on top of it that if you suddenly unloaded that, the whole thing would just blow up anyway. Oh, that's great, yeah. Well, Chris, you were speculating on ways to destroy a planet, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> or even just a small, small-ish spot on the crust. If you took uh -huh. off something the size of a continent, then all of a sudden you've got a continent-sized supervolcano turning the planet inside out, potentially. Now, now we're talking. Ah. Um, I like we so we might need a lot less energy than a, than a Yoda, Yoda watt or Yoda jewel. You must unlearn what you have learned. I would argue that there was some sort of uh, power source on board of R2 and possibly the... the